και το τρίτο και το πιο καλό κομμάτι, the third and the best, um, is now. Um, it's the one that I'm more nervous about because let's see if the technology will work inside because a lot of the technology that we're going to show you was designed for outdoors, but I have faith in my team uh, and also the team here at, uh, um, at the foundation. So, as I said to you in the previous presentations, our focus is to find alternatives. And during the session tonight, again, we'll talk about this idea of having alternatives to drugs. Um, and we're going to choose two particular examples. One has to do with a, with a very topical issue, which is running shoes. And those of you who are not interested in running, please don't sleep, please don't switch off. The same technology, the same idea that we're going to use in the sub-2 marathon is the same thing that Taiki said to me at dinner that we had a year ago. Can we use smart clothing and smart shoes to warn us that some elderly people in some island very far away from mainland hospitals is about to fall down because they have Astathia instability. You remember that, Takis? And I said to him, what a great question. Unknown to him, that night I start putting a, a group of experiments together and the beauty of that is on the 13th of November we'll present a clinical innovation to do exactly that. The idea came from that discussion, just for interest. So, that's why this is not only about marathon. I'm just trying to show you the power of technology and innovation. So, we had a look already at nutrition. Now we're going to look at biomechanics and bioenergetics. And I appreciate that in the Greek uh, university sector, there's some very, very strong biomechanists. So there's no reason why here we can't develop this and this area as well. Our expert that I must acknowledge is Peter Weyand from Dallas. Peter Weyand is the biomechanist who is co-supervising Kosandinos for his PhD, who designed and modeled, not designed, modeled this, the blades for Oscar Pistorius. You remember the Blade Runner. So, again, what, what is important, the reason I'm mentioning that, is for anything you're doing, you want to always liaise and work with the expert, wherever that expert is. I may stand here and look like an expert in everything, I'm not. The experts are the people that we go to who advise us and then we put the whole thing together. So, a lot of what I'll say to you has been developed in collaboration with Peter. Okay, something that I don't know if it's really registered with everybody. Certainly when I present the next two or three slides, it surprises people. Now, I'm sure most of you would have watched the Rio Olympic Games. Did you notice that gold, silver and bronze, these three athletes that you see here, all wore the same shoe? Had you noticed that? Some of you in the marathon certainly had. But most people didn't recognize that, didn't notice that. If you look at the women's race, the same. All the three runners, gold, silver and bronze, wore the same shoe. The statistician in the room will say, it's normal, because Nike, this company, is the biggest. It has most of the athletes. Eh, once every 10 years or whatever, you can have all of them being Nike. But was it that? The winner in the women's race, Jemima Somgog, you see here, is again wearing this shoe. And today we will demonstrate that technology with one of, our, one of your Greek athletes to see what does this shoe do? What is peculiar about this shoe and can we learn from this? Again, something we needed to learn as sub-2 project.
The analogy I want you to think about is the way I think about it. I always think of Formula One racing, because Formula One, for me, is a good example of what we need to combine sport with medicine and health and innovation, all of that together. A sports car, a Formula One car, sometimes they use Pirelli tires, sometimes they use whatever, whatever, whatever. They choose the best tires. We should be doing the same. So let's try and develop this theme a bit more. But the reason I'm also showing you Jemima is that she won wearing these shoes. She had the benefit of being training and living at altitude in Kenya. And she had EPO. Which means that how can one athlete from a country, whatever country is, who's clean, hasn't got sponsors, but just buys their shoe, go and compete with us? It's not possible. And for me, passionate about the Olympics, the Olympic ideals, this has to be dealt with. And that's why we have set up the Sub2 project. So she's got all the weapons that one would use, or abuse, should I say, and ends up getting the, the result, while the clean athlete will say, what's the point? And that's what we're dealing with. So, as a sub two project, we were very interested in trying to find what was going on, and together with the New York Times, because the New York Times, I consider, as I mentioned before, almost a partner to our project. So whenever we have something exciting, we contact them or they contact us, because there's no better marketing agency than them. And so here you see, do Nike's new, do the new shoes give runners an unfair advantage? My lecture for tonight is about fairness in sport, because that has to be paramount in everything we do. We have to try, at the start of an event, everyone must have an equal opportunity to do well, irrespective of inequalities that we have because of our genetics, where we live, etc. So, what I did, I was very fortunate at the time that Kelenisa Bekile was one of our athletes. He was a Nike athlete. So we had access to the best of Nike. The best that they had, I would get immediately, which is a big privilege to have, to see what innovations. And leading up to the Rio Olympic Games, when at that point I didn't know that Nike had their own project, I was working with Nike to perfect the shoe for my athlete for Sub 2, hoping the $30 million were coming next week. Unknown to me, because I'm a very naive, first time he was given the shoe, he says, these are, I don't want to use these. Those of you who've been following our project may remember a publication that we had in the journal Nature, together with Dan Lieberman from Harvard, where we showed that barefoot running, or barefoot style running, may be preventative for, for damage, because it doesn't produce an impact force, because you have a very good cushioning system within the foot, and also because of the weight issue, shoes have weight, and from the biomechanics and bioenergetics, we know that every 100 grams is 1% more work. So if your shoe weighs 300 grams, 3% extra work. Okay, so the ideal shoe should be 0 grams. And that's what we were developing in 2012, 2013. Some of you will have heard of the Vibram shoes, the Five Finger shoes. You must have heard of all these things. And in one sense, from an evolutionary point of view, they're the perfect kind of shoes you want, because we have to be honest with ourselves. Shoes are destroying our feet. There's no, that's a different discussion for maybe next year. Those of you wearing leather shoes, you must know your feet are being damaged, okay? But that's a different story because we are detraining our feet. Our feet are not designed to be protected. And while we may all, some of us may like uh, admiring or you wearing high-heeled shoes, again, damage to feet, but different story. So I took this shoe to hospital. Why did I take the shoe to hospital? What did I want to do? I want to scan the shoe. What is inside the shoe? And I only had one pair, so I couldn't cut it. So I thought, I'll take it to hospital. You can imagine what the consultant radiographer says, this professor is really crazy. 
But they all listened to me, which is very nice. And he scanned the shoe for me. We'll come back to what I found. I'll keep that a secret for a while. But remember the headlines of that article, which was, unfair. is it fair or unfair? And remember, in the previous clip, when you saw Kenisa Bikile almost breaking the world record, we used the shoe. I used the shoe. I'm a, I was a fan of the shoe. I asked Kenisa, please use this shoe. But the question really is, what is in it? And is it unfair to use that shoe? Well, one simple way to look at it is what does the rule say? What does the IWF rule say in terms of this particular shoe? And I'd like to draw your attention to rule 143 in clothing, shoes and athlete bibs. And the rule says, athletes may compete barefoot so you can actually do what I said initially, which is to be barefoot. And maybe down the line, you will see the barefoot shoe come from sub two, but we'll come back to that later on. Or with footwear on both feet, the purpose of shoes for competition is to give protection and stability to the feet and a firm grip on the ground. Such shoes, however, must not be constructed so as to give athletes an unfair assistance or advantage. In other words, if wearing the shoe is giving you a performance benefit, then it should, it's against the rules. That's very, very clear, isn't it? And before I mention about these innovations, because some people will critique our project, saying, Yanis, you're providing these innovations, but actually it's not available for everybody. We try and make them available, that's the whole point of this. And that's in also in agreement with this rule. Any type of shoe used must be reasonably available to all in the spirit of the universality of athletics. Two points here. Reasonably available to all in the spirit of universality of athletics. I was really wanting to do this demonstration to you and I really want you to use an athlete that could benefit from that knowledge. And so we chose Alexis, who we'll, you'll see shortly, uh, who will do the experiment for us today. And I'm really, I'd like to thank Alexis and his coach for allowing us to actually do this today and for you to benefit from that, those experiments. Um, so, but that also produced a problem for me because the only shoe size I have are the feet of Kenanisa, who clearly wouldn't be too happy for me passing his shoes around. So I had to find a shoe for this demonstration. I won't say exactly what we had to do to try and get hold of that shoe because we, it, it was a problem. And the cost is, and, our, and our supporters here, our partners, a lot of money to actually get access to these shoes to fit our athlete. But we've managed to do that. Okay, I'm, I'm talking a bit more because I'm waiting for the athlete to come, so that's good. Anyway, so we managed to get the shoe with a lot of difficulty, and where we got the shoe, it's the only one now available. So in no way is it reasonably available for everyone. So the experiment you will see, I'll just plan for the experiment because the athlete is just warming up and will shortly start. And we can see we did the, the exact experiment you will see is what we did in our lab out in Ethiopia in Addis Ababa. So here you see Sean. Here you see our volunteer. Our volunteer here, as you can see from the who is there, is Kenanisa. This is the shoe which you will see today. The weight of the shoe is 188 to 189 grams, which is, as I said to you, equivalent to 2% extra weight or 2% extra energy cost. And I'll show you, for example, what, it, what you will see as well. You'll see the athlete here is wearing a mask. For those of you not used to ergometrica tests, it's actually to assess the oxygen uptake and in particular the running economy. And to do it wearing different shoes. And I'll just, I'll just let you see the kind of thing we get. So I could have easily just done that and showed you a video clip and then show you the results. But 
I think it's far more interesting to actually do the demo so you could actually, we can get the results together. What we've also done is, we don't want to be seen as promoting a particular shoe or a particular drink or anything like that. So what we've done is, we've selected two shoes for you. The Nike Mayfly that's got this something in it, which I'll show you shortly, okay? Um, and the equivalent shoe from another company, Adidas, who have, have called the shoe the Sub 2 shoe. So, and it's the shoe that the Sub 2 Marathon group used when we worked with Wilson Kipsang and broke the course record in Tokyo. And I'll show you a, a short video clip of that later on. So we've used both shoes that you see, you'll see today. And the question is, what advantage did Kenanisa have? What disadvantage, if anything, did Wilson Kipsang have? And actually, are these shoes fair or unfair? So let me just, this is, we're doing this live. So Sean, are we ready? Okay, so you guys just proceed, and as you're proceeding, let's, let's increase the screens, um, and I will talk you through what they're doing. I kindly ask you just to remain seated for now. Let's get the thing going. You will see everything on the screen. I'll actually come down, so I'm not interfering either, um, and we'll explain what they're doing. So we are instrumenting uh, Alexis here, as you can see, and placing the heart rate monitor on. What you'll also see, and while they're doing that, I will just describe some of the other innovations you'll see. We are going to also use the smart app that we've developed in, in collaboration with Vodafone and Huawei to allow us to get real-time information of what the athlete is doing. So we'll get responses on the screen, so you'll notice here, at the moment, if you look, his heart rate Maybe it's not started yet or whatever, or maybe he's, bit, he's just on his warm-up, so he's probably uh, just trying to uh, um, respond. Yeah, so his heart rate is about 106 here. He's done a good warm-up. And you'll see his responses. I must say, because we're indoors, there may be a 20 to 30-second delay. Okay? Um, but just bear with us on that. So you may find there's a delay between these parameters uh, and the real parameters. Okay? So just be aware of that. And... So when he's doing the experiment, we will see his responses. And then more interesting, when he goes out, we will see not only what he's doing, we will actually see his responses. Also what you will see, so let me tell you what you will see. And remember, the beauty of this is we can develop any sensor you want. Whether it's a sports sensor, which are the kind of things we're doing here, like heart rate. We can look at, um, uh, uh, down here, you'll see um, what we call kinetic and kinematic sensors, which tell us, oops, they're just refreshing to try and get the data more. Okay, here we have, for example, contact time, which is the amount of time the foot is in contact with the ground. We have here the cadence. Okay, what is the cadence um, of, of, the, of the athlete? Here we have what is the stride angle. The stride angle is when you touch the ground, what is, the, what is the, the angle between the ground and the sole of the shoe? That's very important. Why? Because in the paper I mentioned to you before, whether you land with your heel, mid-stance, or forefoot stance makes a very, very big difference. Yesterday at dinner, Mersha was sharing with me a video of one of his top young talents. And he says, Yanis, look at this athlete. Tell me what you see. He was wearing the Nike shoe that you'll watch too, but he was landing on his heels. First of all, he's not using the, the shoe. The Nike shoe becomes irrelevant because he's not using the spring mechanism. Oop, I've told you what's inside. And secondly, as we know, due to the impact force, he's not going to last as a marathon runner because he's going to cause damage and stress fractures. If he follows the guidance of doing 44 kilometers, 45 kilometers twice a month at least, he's not going to last a year. All right? So having that angle is very, very important. In terms of other sensors, okay, here, this one here is the core pill, okay, which we're not, um, uh, as I've ingested one, but we're not going to do this in li live, although uh, Sean has given Alexis a pill, we'll see that later. Uh, we just weren't set up to doing it in inside. This is 
our VO2, indirect measurement of running economy, okay, VO2, so this is in mils per kilogram per minute. I apologize for the decimal place for the scientists in the room. This was Vodafone making it to three decimal places. It's not meaningful, but you'll get an idea of oxygen uptake. For the non-scientists, this is the size of the engine and, and what his economy is. This one here is the land temperature. Okay, the land surface temperature, and I must acknowledge if Iyenya Karamitsoglu from Astroscopio Athenon, the very googled eyed would have seen as our partner, the Astroscopio Athenon is our main partner providing us with this technology. She has done a lot of work with NASA, she's a remarkable scientist, and thanks to her, we can access in real time satellite information thanks to the excellent work she's doing, okay? Um, so I really would like to thank Ifeyenia, um, uh, uh, although she couldn't be with us today because she's, she's traveling. So this parameter here, land surface temperature, that we get when the athlete is running outdoors, is vital, and we get that thanks to Greek innovation. Uh, the humidity, the air temperature, which is different to the land surface temperature, and then this kinematic sense I've already referred to. But theoretically speaking, we can get any sensor we want. While they're setting up, because they're setting up, as you can see here, they're setting up the K5 here, which is doing the absolute measurement of this, VO2. So what should happen is the number you see here and the number this machine gives us should be in agreement. It's th it is the topic of Kosandinos' PhD to actually make this number spot on so we never have to do this in a race because we, you're not going to have Alexis running in a, a competition wearing all of this. But he will wear the watch and then we can get his VO2 from this technology and that's what Kosandinos is hoping to do. But let's see today the work we've done for the last year, how close this number is going to be to the number on the K5. If it's bad, we need to go back to the drawing uh, room. But let's see what we get. The other thing, talking about sensors, and this is for this physician in the room, the sports physician as well, but the physician, is that already companies like Abbott are providing real-time sensors of glucose. So I don't know if anyone in the room is aware or maybe themselves or have a, a diabetic and have, an on, have a real-time sensor. It's a sensor that goes onto the skin and it measures in real-time glucose. Well, if we can measure glucose, we can measure lactate, we can measure pyruvate, we can measure anything you want. If I had more time to present to you, and without insulting myself or the sports scientists in the room or the erkhusiologi in the room, is the pioneers and Nobel Prize winners of physiology, A.V. Hill and Otto Meyerhoff, the men our mentors, who got Nobel Prize for their work, they would be very disappointed with our field today that we're still doing VO2 max testing 100 years later. Where is the development? So we should be trying to do new things. This is the kind of thing we talk about new, but also in terms of sensors. And I'll show you some of that later on, but let's get back to the experiment. So now we have Alexis who's, who's uh, been instrumented. You'll note he's actually wearing the, the shoes that I referred to before. Um, also, you'll notice that around his foot, he's also wearing a sensor. A sensor, which is the one that we had access to, which weighs 18 grams, which no athlete would wear, you can see it here too, no athlete would wear in a competition really, although it's not too different from what athletes sometimes have to wear to uh, record the, the fact that they've run the, the distance of the marathon. But already we have actually changed this and developed a 0.2 gram sensor which will go into the shoe. We will build it into the foam of the shoe. To do also what Taki said is to make the intelligent shoe with the sensor built into the shoe. So the shoe will become intelligent. Okay, so now we have Alexis on the, on the treadmill. You proceed as you wish. Okay, so just proceed independently to what we're saying. So they've warmed him up a little bit and 
the, the running economy people in the room will know that the test we normally use is to run the athlete at, at the speed of 16 kilometers per minute, okay? Kilometers an hour, sorry. Okay? 60 kilometers an hour. And I'll bring him up to that. And they're going to do it for five minutes. What you will see here, okay, is time and VO2. VO2 in liters per minute and VO2 in milliliters per kilogram per minute. This number here should eventually match with this number. There's a bit of a delay, remember? This has about a 30-second delay because we're in this room. You see, I haven't started recording yet because of the delay, but focus on this side. Because remember, we want to, with this particular shoe now, we want to find out what his VO2 is going to be and see if it's different to when we change to the next shoe. Mosha, can you give me the Adidas shoe while we're waiting? Can you bring me the, the Adidas shoe, the other shoe? Just to remind you as well that due to auction kinetics, you'll find that the values will go up. It takes about two and a half to three minutes to stabilize. So the VO2 should eventually stabilize at a value which would be the auction cost of Alexis running, thank you, running with the, this particular shoe. Okay, the reason, uh, now remember, the reason actually the VO2 is coming out of zero here is actually it's not moving. <laughs> that, I mean, it means not moving, it's not outdoors, so ignore this number until we're outside. But you can see his heart rate is here, and when he goes outside, we'll compare this number to that number. Um, note, for example, here we have the, um, uh, the cadence, 182. Here we have the contact time, 0.2, how long he's touching down. And here we have the, stride a the strike angle, which tells us whether he's a four-foot striker, mid-strike, um, or heel striker. But we'll get a better idea, remember this number here, to when he's running outdoors, because it's difficult to determine if someone is a, what kind of um, strike they have, what, what kind of running form they have, until they're outside, because now he's running on a treadmill. Hmm? The, 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 the temperature, it's because it's not outside. In terms of VO2, we are sitting here, at around, I'm trying to look at the numbers here. Uh, VO2, the numbers, okay, here. Around about, it's fluctuating here, 48, 51.6 mils per kilogram per minute. Keep that number in, in mind as well. So it's starting to plateau as I predicted. Remember, he's going to do five minutes. Five minutes with his shoe. The numbers here, you can see 45, 49, 46, 44. Those are the numbers we want to compare that shoe to the Adidas Sub 2, which is the shoe Wilson Kipsang used, and that's the shoe Elliot used. So let's see what difference it makes. Again, cadence, sorry, contact time 0.25, cadence 182, heart rate 169. Again, try and remember these numbers. What will happen when they finish the experiment, I will carry on presentation, and then they will do the comparison for us and tell us what difference the shoe made. So, th so try and remember this now, although they will do the analysis for us. So again, look at the VO2s here. The VO2s being 51, 51.3. So see, it's, it's stabilizing at around about 50. A little bit less, maybe. Sorry? Yes, and the cadence is very, very stable. You can see here, and that's a good example of... It's also the fact that the treadmill is at a very fixed uh, speed, but also because he's a very uh, experienced runner, he's able to maintain his cadence, his, st his strike angle, everything, contact time, 
very, very steady. But that's the information you want in the beginning of the race, in the middle of the race, at the end of the race. Uh, five seconds until he stops, and you can see the values here pla plateauing at about 40, oh, it's there, yeah, 40, 48, 49, okay? Thank you for that, brilliant. So what Alex is going to do now, and we'll get more information from here, is, gonna, is they're going to walk out, have a short break, and then within, within about five minutes, they're going to do exactly the same thing outdoors. And then we should have all these parameters. Um, and you'll, so you'll, he's done the indoors, and now we're going to do the outdoors, doing the exact same experiment to see what effect. And keep in mind these numbers to see how they change when he's out, out there. Just as motivation to, for Alexia, okay, just give him applause. Okay. Okay, so Alexis now will, will go out and you can actually monitor what Alexis is doing, okay? From the from the cameraman who's taking him out. Okay, you can see here. The uh, oh, yes. And while we're doing that, let me carry on in the presentation because you're getting you're already getting an idea of what we are expecting to see. Okay, so let's proceed a little bit further until we actually start seeing numbers here. So let me bring, let me share with you now what's inside the shoe. Okay, and this is actually the exact picture, okay, that I was provided by the hospital that was used in the New York Times. You can see it acknowledges me. Here's the shoe, and this this is Kerenice's shoe in Berlin. Note carefully here. That is the blade. It's a carbon fiber plate that is used and acts as a spring mechanism. And once we, once we saw this, it started to make sense. It made sense because a typical running shoe tends to be fairly easy to do that. After, when, when Alexi changed over to this shoe, I'll pass those shoes around for you to have a feel if you haven't. It's very difficult to bend. And to try and do a demonstration, I had a little uh, cushioning ball, and I do that. And with the Nike one, it goes 50 meters almost. It's a great spring. It's a spring mechanism. So does the shoe provide an advantage? Will we see differences when we compare the carbon fiber plate with the athlete's normal shoe? Nike have done the experiment already for us, okay? The group, they published this early on this year, and you can see here the study. Comparison of the energetic cost of running in marathon racing shoes. And what they found, basically, it's too small for you to read, is there was a 4%, roughly 4% saving in running economy. Let's be very clear about that, so that... It, you don't misunderstand 4%. It doesn't mean that the athlete's performance is 4% faster. It just means they're 4% more economical. But also, keep in mind the shoe weighs 200 or 189 grams, which is adding 2%. So the shoe, in one sense, gives you advantage of 2%. Okay? but it's giving you an advantage over other shoes. That was in the hands of Nike. We're going to do the same experiment in Alexi to see what we find. Because what we also can see from this research is there is a variability. And one of the reasons some of our athletes didn't want to use this shoe was the shoe, apparently, from what Nike themselves have said, was designed for Elliot Kipchoge. It was the innovation for breaking two. And so good luck to them in terms of that they did innovate. This was an interesting innovation. Only a few days ago, this publication came out from another group who did the study, I would argue, even better. And you can see from the title, published in the journal Sports Medicine, randomized crossover study investigating the running economy of highly trained male and female distance runners in marathon racing shoes versus track spikes. 
And this is what they did. There's the Nike shoe. There's the Adidas shoe. And there's the Spike shoe, which is the comparison they did. And they did it 14 kilometers, at 15, at 16, and also at 18 kilometers. I remind you that the typical running economy test is at 16 kilometers, and that is what Alexi is doing today, 16 kilometers. And just before we carry on there, um, we need to zoom in a little bit. So can, can we zoom in um, the screen? Basically, just so we can go, if you, go, if you just click on that arrow there so we can actually see the square. So zoom in, if, just, just click once on that, in that, if we can. Yes. But while we're doing that, look at the responses. Now he's, he's out there, he's hard at 112. Now you can see his VO2. So obviously he's not got up to speed yet, thank you. That's great, thank you. Perfect. So, okay, you can see the VO2 coming up. There's the land temperature, there's the humidity, there's the air temperature. There are the sensors, um, and I think he'll shortly will start. Okay? Now, I don't know about you, but whenever I see this, I get really excited, because this is, this is something we thought could never happen. And a little anecdote to show you the power of what we... Elenares can do, is this was actually invented at Plaka here in Athens after the classical marathon uh, of two years ago when I sat with an engineer from Vodafone who had just ran the marathon who said, Yanis, how, he happens to be my cousin and he, said to, and he works for Vodafone in Spain, he says, Yanis, how can we help you in your project? I said, I want to, I'm using a drone to measure these parameters because we were developing a drone to fly over our athletes. He says, Yanis, why do you want a drone? And we sat in Plaka, you know, under the Acropolis, on the tablecloth, drafting what we could do. In six months, Kiriakos, uh, Exadactylus, my cousin from, um, from Mitilini, we created this. So let's have a look how, how well it works. So, the heart rate is still quite low, okay. Le Sorry? Oh, that's why, oh, okay, that's why, okay. So they haven't started yet. Okay, we can also can see from, the, from the, um, the pace. So they haven't actually, well, there's the average pace. So basically, he hasn't really got started. Let's see what happens. And as you see, you can add any amount of sensors you want. So l let's just wait for him to get started. You can see now he's got no, no uh, data here, so he's not moving yet, but he'll start shortly. Keep in mind, there is a short delay. Okay, while we're waiting for him to start, let's just go back to hear what they found here. We'll come back to that when that starts. Okay, so you can see here, if we take the 16 kilometers an hour, okay, we see what happens. This, this blue one here is the same shoe that Alexis is wearing. And his VO2, on average, is lower compared to all, uh, the average of all these individuals, is lower compared to the other shoes. And that's the, that's the, that is the point here, that the shoe here is lower here, lower at the higher speed, lower at 15, and lower at 14. What we would do if we were working, and, w and as we did with Kenanisa, you saw him on the treadmill, we were putting him on the treadmill at race pace, because at the end of the day, if your athlete is running the marathon at 15 kilometers an hour, then test it at 15. If at 20, or trying to attempt a world record at faster than 21, then clearly that's where you want to do the experiment. So let's see what's happening here. Post by Excel? Less than a minute, they will start running. Oh, they haven't started yet. Okay, okay, wait, okay. So we have another minute. Okay. Oh, we'll save the VO2, of course. Yes, okay. So let's see what happens. But let's carry on here. So in essence, what we're showing here is, or what these scientists showed, is the fact that the plate was advantageous. Sorry? The spikes were used only as a comparison because they're light. It was almost like a control. The spikes, if I'm not mistaken, were um, the, the least economical one, which is this one here. Okay. Um, and I think the interesting point highlighted in the yellow is this number here, that the improvement with the Nike Vaporfly was 1.7% to 7.15%. So imagine your athlete could be this guy, or it could be this guy. 
So again, and it could be as we were discussing with Mersha yesterday, if my athlete has this benefit, can I training Mersha change his gait to get a 7% improvement from the same shoe? So then it becomes training to get maximum benefit out of your, your shoe, as an example of what could happen. Because that difference there is quite a range for the different individuals. Well, I found that very interesting. Let's start it. Let's started, so let's look. Mm. Yes. Right. Entirely. Okay. Okay. That's a v thank you. That's a very good point. Remember now, we're trying to we're creating some history here today. This has never been done anywhere in the world. Okay. So it is a historic moment. In a room that's actually, you can see, it's quite a heavy room, so we are having interference. There is a delay, so there's delay between these responses and these responses, but um, as long as we have numbers on both sides, at the end of this uh, practical, we will have the data back from the group and tell us, did we find a difference in Alexi? Um, Let's see here. I'm not getting, I don't think you started yet, or at least it's not reporting a start. Let's have a look here. In terms of VO2, What's happening here? Well, while we're waiting for these numbers to change, let me carry on with the presentation while we're going through. It's working now. Oh, thank you. Okay, we'll come back here. All right, so there was a delay. So you can see here they've started. Uh, heart rate, VO2. Remember the VO2 from memory was around about between 44 and 50, remember? Let's see what's happening outside. Okay, well, it's up at 65 at the moment, but let's see. Let's see it will plateau out. Um, you can see at the strike angle at this point here, 15.7, the cadence point, uh, 189, which is not too different to what was inside, quite similar. You can see here the pace, okay, it's running at a, a 321 um, minute kilometer pace, okay, you can see here the heart rate, heart rate quite low because either uh, assuming that it's working, because it is, seems quite low, but anyway, you're getting the point. Um, obviously, we can perfect these things, we will perfect these things. As I say, this didn't exist months ago, and look what's happening, the power of innovation. Let's look at the VO2s here, the VO2s here are about 53, 59, 55, uh, not too different, okay, and there's a delay as well, okay. So, of course, we may have some work to do, but not too bad. And you can see where he's going. And the beauty of this, you can do it during a race. And remember, those sensors are referred to. Now it's 20 grams. We are reducing the size of that. While we're waiting for this to happen, let's carry on with the presentation. What these companies are doing, and we also, and I'll show you shortly what development sub two is doing in terms of shoes, is the sole is very important, okay? Because that is what uh, gives the rebound as well as the plate. And what these companies are doing is developing the sole out of foam, and not so much out of rubber. Rubber is what makes it durable, but rubber is heavy while foam is not heavy. So. To make the Nike shoe very light, they're using very little foam, sorry, very little rubber. And this is actually Kiriakos himself from Vodafone doing the running, um, uh, I think it was Boston. Look what happened at the end of his race. The shoe had fallen apart because very little rubber. So these are really shoes for one race. But if it's, the, if it's your Olympic final, you'll do it. Okay? Uh, but it's just to show you, and this also based on what was in the literature, others who have bought the shoe have found that as well. But the, the important bit here is that the shoe works. Importantly, it's light. And these, this innovation can be enhanced and improved. Let's keep in mind the question, though, is it fair? Let's come back to the data here. So again, looking at VO2s, we're about 50s here, 50, 48, 54, 52. Here, about 58, a little bit higher here, OK? You see the, the kinematics. And what will be very interesting for us to do is when Alexis come back, we'll change over to the Adidas shoe, which doesn't have a carbon fiber plate. So going back to my initial premise is, and, and, a, and a, a group led by Ross Tucker from, um, uh, uh, from South Africa, who's got a, a very famous uh, uh, 
Science of Sport website that some of you will be aware, he made a very interesting remark when Elliot broke the world record. Uh, so also when Elliot won uh, recently um, the Berlin Marathon, he said, could it be that Elliot had a shoe that was much better than Wilson, who had come, I think, third or fourth or fifth, but actually Wilson was a better athlete because he had a shoe that gave him less benefit and so the difference between first and fourth, his position, was down to the fact that Elliot had a shoe. It's just an interesting argument. So while those numbers are being generated, let's carry on with the presentation. So as I said to you, so what we are doing is sub two. Uh, yes. Uh, we have some uh, um, clip from the runners. Yes. From the canal. Put, let's, let's put that. Let, let, take that down, let's put that up. No, 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 no problem. Yes. Yeah, no, no problem. Let's do that. Let's do that. Yes. So they understand what happened. Yeah, no, that's a great idea. And I must really thank the, the team here from the, from the foundation. This is just a remarkable means of presenting, and I thank them very much. This is excellent. So you want to put up the, the camera? Okay, there you are. This is fabulous. I'm sure you agree with me. Not only the innovation in terms of what we're trying to get across to you, the innovation in terms of presentation. This is, this is awesome. Okay, there we see Alexi. And there's also Sean, who's pacing him. So, again, as I said, this is a little nice little moment of history. You know, let me come down here so I don't disturb the photograph. So, we have Alexi here, we have the VO2, you can see here the numbers. Uh, okay, now he's actually, there must be a delay because here he's, he's slowed right down, so he's actually obviously stopped here. Yeah, you can see he's, he's, going, he's coming back. Sorry? Yeah, so the video is not live. Okay, okay, thank you. So we're doing this a little bit off the cuff, so I apologize if we're not very slick. But we are going to be slick because we're doing the same presentation in the Medica Congress in Dusseldorf in, in 10 days' time. So unfortunately, you're also here as guinea pigs. We are testing you out to see if we impress. Okay? Um, but this is really great. So they'll head back. And I, d I can't imagine a better location to actually demonstrate these kind of innovations than in the, the, together with the Sports Excellence and the, the foundation here at Stavros Nierkos. I'm sure if the, if, if the powers of being were in the room watching this, they'll be pretty impressed. As I hope you are, by the way. Okay, let's go back to the science, okay. And by the way, I'm not promoting shoes. I'm not promoting uh, Adidas or Nike. All I'm trying to say to you is, let's think differently, okay. And and here are the shoe companies that I've raced with as sub two. The shoe that you're going to see shortly, the Adidas uh, sub two. I don't know if there's any lawyers in the room, but I'm pretty upset though that my logo sub two is on the shoe. But do I take them to court? I'll spend my next 10 years taking people to court. We don't want to do that. But it's interesting that the trademark that we own is on the Adidas shoe, but that's okay. Oh, yes. <laughs> Woo! Bravo, Alexi. And, and, and while, while we're taking things off, can I have a microphone, please? Microphone? Give me a microphone, someone. Microphone, microphone, microphone. So, Alexi, while they're instrumenting you, I'm sorry to, to disturb you, but. Alexi, they put Pesma, Sposi Sanfikis, Metamaputia. Alexi, can you see me? No. Λοιπόν, Αλέξη, σε ευχαριστώ πάρα πολύ. Είσαι φανταστικό πραγματικά. Okay. Κάνε μια μικρή ιστορία σήμερα. Είχαμε τα αποτελέσματα σου όπω τα έκανε live εδώ μέσα, με ένα μικρό, ένα μικρό delay. Αλλά το, το ουσιαστικό για, για, για την αίθουσα του άτομα εδώ μέσα είναι πώ βρήκε τα παπούτσια. Γιατί αν δεν ξέρω αν το ξέρετε, ο Αλέξη μόλι πρόσθετα μα το πει ο ίδιο, έδειξε το μαραθώνιο uh, τη Φραγκφούρτη με τα δικά του παπούτσια. Uh, και ήθελαμε να, 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 να μα πει ο, ο, ο Αλέξη. Πώ ένιωσε αυτή τη στιγμή με τα Nike Mayfly και γενικά με όλα που έχει κάνει. Ναι, καλησπέρα πρώτα απ' όλα. Ε, σίγουρα είναι με διαφορά το καλύτερο παπούτσι που έχω φορέσει. Wow, okay. ναι, ε, πολύ ελαφρύ, πολύ μαλακό. Δεν έχω ξαναφορήσει τόσο μαλακό παπούτσι. Και γενικά νομίζω σε πάει μόνο του το παπούτσι. Είναι, είναι καταπληκτικό. Ναι. Είναι καταπληκτικό. Okay. Uh, Αλέξη, έχει το παπούτσι που έδειξε στη Φραγκφούρτη μαζί σου. Το έχω μαζί μου, ναι. Μα τα δίνει κάποιο, αν, αν είναι εύκολο. Γιατί μα είπε δύο ενδιαφέροντα πράγματα ο Αλέξη. Είπε ότι είναι λαφρύ και το άλλο τι είπε, ήταν. Uh... Πολύ μαλακό. Οκ, okay, λαφρύ και μαλακό. 
Και αν, αν κοιτάξει μόνο το βάρο αυτού του παπουτσίου, δεν έχω ζυγαριά να σκάνω, είναι αρκετά βαρύ. Είναι αρκετά. Που σημαίνει ότι ο Αλέξη, τι χρόνο μα έκανε στη Φραγκφούρτη, Καλέξη. 2,36 έκανε. Okay, 2,36. Αν ο Αλέξη πουρούσε αυτό το παπούτσι, θα είχε τρέξει λίγα λεπτά πιο γρήγορα. Με, την ίδια, ε, πώς λέμε, με το ίδιο effort, με όλα αυτά. Yeah. Πώ νιώθει που το ξέρει αυτό αυτή τη στιγμή. Ίσως έπρεπε να το είχα το παπούτσι ήδη. <laughs> ναι, και αυτό είναι σημαντικό, μιλάμε για το fairness. Αλλά ο Αλέξης, αν ήθελε να πάρει αυτό το παπούτσι, δεν θα μπορούσε να το βρει. Λοιπόν, είναι fair. Πώς νιώθεις ότι ο αθλητής που τρέχει στην Άντια α, α, έχει αυτό το παπούτσι και εσύ τώρα αναγκάζεσαι να κάνεις την υπερπροσπάθεια μόνο να, να φτάσει στο ίδιο ναι. σημείο. Πώς νιώθεις. Σίγουρα, έχει ένα πλεονέκτημα ναι. απέναντί μου. Ναι. Εντάξει, είναι λίγο δύσκολο να το πλησιάσω άμα, έχει, άμα κερδίζει ξέρω εγώ, στο μαραθώνιο τρία λεπτά μόνο από το παπούτσι. Ναι. Εγώ, από την εμπειρία μου με αθλητέ, και δεν το, θέρω, δεν το λέω με άσχημο τρόπο, ότι οι αθλητέ, ιδιαίτερα οι, και οι top αθλητέ που έχουμε συνεργαστεί, είναι πάρα πολύ selfish. Πώ λέτε selfish, Συγγνώμη. Εγωιστέ. Σκέφτονται και έτσι πρέπει για να είναι έτοιμοι για τον αγώνα κλπ. Εσύ τώρα, αν, αν σκεφτεί λίγο εγωιστικά, γιατί μου φαίνεται ότι δεν είσαι εγωιστή καθόλου, δεν θα πει θέλω αυτό το παπούτσι τώρα. Τώρα ναι, το απαιτώ αυτό ναι. το παπούτσι. Okay. Να το έχω. <laughs> Εντάξει. Ναι, ναι, ναι. ναι, 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 ναι. Uh, I'm, just, I'm wasting time so you can recover. Okay, so don't, don't, I'm just talking until you take over. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, you ready or should I. Okay. okay. Uh, ναι, ναι, θα, okay. Ναι, ναι. So you just tell me. We'll carry on talking. Κάτσε, Alexi, να ξεκουραστεί ενώ μιλάμε. Okay. Ή ό,τι θέλει. Okay. Um, uh, και αυτό που προσπαθώ να σας, να, να σας αποδείξω αυτό που κάνουμε αυτή τη σήμερα είναι η σημασία της, πάλι της τεχνολογίας και του innovation. Okay. Uh, δεν μας μίλησες λίγο για το πώς ένιωσες που είχες μέσα όμως το fiber plate. Δηλαδή, πες, δη, 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 δεν ήσουν εδώ όταν το, το παρουσίασα, απλώς δεν το έχεις δει να το δεις και εσύ λίγο. Αν πάμε... Α, το είδε. Α, έχει πάει μόνο το. Α, μπράβο, ναι. Αλλά, να, ναι, να σου δίνει δεις... μία όθηση παραπάνω. Σε σπρώχνει. Αυτό το που δεν είδε, Λέξη, όταν ήσουν έξω, μέσα στο παπούτσι που φορά υπάρχει αυτό το plate. Και ονομάζεται spring mechanism. Okay. Uh, και εξήγησε μου λίγο αυτό που είπε. Πάει μόνο του. Πε, εξήγησε μα λίγο περισσότερο. Το παπούτσι πρώτα απ' όλα δεν λυγίζει εύκολα. Οπότε σου είπα. δίνει μία έξτρα όθηση και σε σπρώχνει να πηγαίνει λίγο πιο γρήγορα. Ναι. Και το, άλλο που, το πρώτο πράγμα που μας είπε ο, ο Κενενίσα όταν φόρεσε αυτό το παπούτσι ήταν ότι, και μετά άλλαξε η γνώμη αμέσως, είναι ότι όταν έκανε το long run, and I'll say it in English so Mersha can hear as well. Mersha, when Κενενίσα wore the, the Nike Mayfly, I don't know if you remember, he commented on us that when he did his long run, he felt less soreness the next days. You know, that was for him was the advantage, that ένιωθε λιγότερο πόνο τις επόμενες μέρες από ένα μεγάλο long run. And it comes back to the point that we were talking about before. If you want to do your 42 kilometers, your 44 kilometers, or whatever, the fact that you have a shoe like this allows you to do that with a quicker recovery because you have less pain. So think of the shoe, and because people think that because Nike's effects on sub-2, which was very damaging to us, that I would be negative towards Nike in terms of innovation. We weren't. We were the opposite. I wrote to Nike when the shoe came out, and I asked them, please promote the shoe as a shoe for sports medicine. And the reason is because this is fantastic for injury prevention. Because think about it, it goes back to the, the impact forces we talked about before, and the biomechanists in the room may understand that very much. So this kind of innovation will be especially important Also, potentially, for the individual who, who's doing marathon running nowadays, the masses, the 100 kilogram middle-aged man who wants to go and run a marathon to get money for charity. So these kind of innovations may help them so they don't end up on Takis' surgery table. So can you see how we can use innovations for performance For clinical purposes, the limit, the, the, these unlimited opportunities. So, what I'm going to do, if Alexis also doesn't mind, I'm going to take the Nike shoe. Oops, sorry. Microphone. 
No, 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 no. This is all good. So what I'm going to do while you get in the microphone, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to send these around, but take them as a couple, okay? And what I want you to do is feel them, and also ligiseto, um, and I'm sure Alex is in mind, ligiseto, and then ligiseto, and have a feel of the difference that it makes, okay? I'll, I'll send on both sides. Just pass it around, and can I have security make sure no one runs out? No, I'm joking. Okay. Okay. Okay, you proceed. Don't worry about me. No, no, you, you guys proceed. Okay. So while we're waiting for Alexi to recover, um, and remember, Alexi was just finished a marathon a few days ago, so we also don't want to cause him too much, too many difficulties. Let's carry on with some of the presentation, so we can. Um, yes. Oh, 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 question, of course, the question I forgot. So I'm, what I was wondering, is yes. this for everybody? I mean, can Anissa was uh, very well prepared for uh, such a Formula One shoe. I remember myself in 1994, I was in Houston to run a marathon and I went to the expo to buy some shoes. And there were three different types of uh, Adidas. One was very, very light. And, and the, the guy asked me, what is your time? And I said, I, because I wanted to, I wanted to buy the, the lightest one. And I, t I told him I have run to 28. He said, no, don't buy this shoe. Take the next one. So he didn't sell it to me, otherwise, uh, although I sure. wanted to buy it because yes. I thought it would be much faster yes. for me. Yes. Uh, again, a, a beautiful question. I really thank you for that. And, and I could spend hours answering that because remember today, one theme for today is the individual. So you, there's nothing in life that's for everyone. <laughs> you know, it's got to be individualized. That's the first thing. Clearly, before these scientific papers came out, I don't know if you, those of you have been following the literature, they did a study where they looked at participants in the major marathons. And they, they worked out the time using, what's that software, the app that does recording of uh, race times? So it's a, what's it called? Strava. Sorry? Strava. Strava. So Strava used data to look at performances of individuals wearing the Nike shoe versus other shoes. And the data is incredibly compelling, and you can Google it, and I can send it to you if you want, that the shoe in general was far better. So much so that I think it was Boston, or at least one of the major marathons, altered the qualification time for entering to the marathon based on whether you had that shoe or not. So the answer I would say is, theoretically speaking, a plate like I showed you should help everyone if you're not heel striking. <laughs> and whether you, whether you are forefoot striking, mid striking, will depend whether you're the 1% improvement or the 7% improvement. And that may come back to biomechanics and bioenergetics and influencing it. That's one thing. Secondly, I must say that I asked, and I, I acknowledge Kiriakos from Vodafone who, who, who shared these pictures for us, because this is actually Kiriakos running. And he said to me, I'll never use the shoe again. I said, but why? You did a personal best. He said, I'll never use the shoe because he couldn't walk for weeks afterwards because the top part of the shoe hasn't been designed for his feet. He felt that the shoe was almost coming off. It was very loose, you know. And, and Moshe will know this. For example, Kenanisa doesn't, like, doesn't wear socks when he wears a shoe. He wants to feel the grip of the ground almost. So these shoes have been designed for special athletes, potentially, and then used by someone else, in this case, Kiriakos. So Kiriakos, although he had a personal best, found that he was not going to use the shoe again. He's going to keep it as a memento that he did well wearing the shoe. So for us, it's not about the shoe. It's about what we learn about the bioenergetics of running from a shoe like this. And I think this knowledge, whether you're a biomechanist, a physiologist, a physician, is incredible. If you're a coach, this is the kind of information you want. But personally, for the sub-2 athletes, it's imperative, it's very, very important we develop this shoe. Why? Because I want to be able to have our athletes run 45 kilometers regularly. And I can't think of another way to do it than this shoe. So for me, this is a training shoe. And if one day, because I would like questions or opinions on whether it's fair based on the rules that I showed you. 
One version, I won't tell you my view, but you can tell me your view. If the view is it's unfair, and let's say IWF treated all these companies in a meritocratic and fair way, they should ban the use of, or in, in racing, of the carbon fiber plate. But I think for training, it's a wonderful adjunct and a tool that can be used by coaches so you don't cause damage to people, so they can actually tolerate uh, the, the distances and the, and, and the terrains that are required, especially for athletes who are not lucky enough to train in the beautiful Nandi Hills of Kenya, and you're running on the concrete jungle, unfortunately, of Athens. You know, this shoot could act as the environment, et cetera, et cetera. Yes, question. Okay, my question is similar. Uh, I've run with the cheaper version of uh, this shoe, the, the Zoom Fly. I think you called this some, something else? Is yeah, this, this is the one that's, that's, the, that's the, the full carbon fiber yes, rather than exactly. the previous version. Yes. So I've run with the Zoom Fly, which has the same uh, kind of... Uh, well, it doesn't bend. Yes. It doesn't bend. Yes. It doesn't have the carbon fiber, but it doesn't bend. So yes. It's similar though, yes. Yes, it's a similar idea. Now, my question is this. Uh, you mentioned that this particular one is springy. Uh, but by the fact that it doesn't bend, it also promotes a four-foot strike. Yes. Now, yes. by promoting four-foot four strike, it means that it relieves from the athlete to put an effort in running in that style. And perhaps it helps the athlete in that way. Uh, how much do you think it contribute? How much do you think that these two factors contribute in the benefit that they have from yes. wearing this shoe? Yes. First, being springy, if it is springy. And second, uh, uh, forcing him, let's say, in uh, yes. doing a full, uh, full yes. foot strike. Yes. Thank you. Uh, I, I must be very clear with you. It's not if it's springy. It, uh, it is definitely springy. And that's the whole mechanism behind it. And we can, and of course, Adina, so part of his PhD, will actually quantify that springiness in one sense. Because if you think about it, it's acting to, to um, uh, look at elastic energy, p potential energy, and create elastic energy. So it, it makes sense. It's going to have a spring mechanism. And, and you can feel that. So that's an easy question to answer the first bit. You're very right that I think in the slower runners, like, let's say, when I say uh, Kiriak is a slow runner, he finished in, in just over three hours, so he's not a bad runner, okay? I think in that case, and maybe even slower runners, that it may force them, as you say, to run more four-foot strike, which is actually what we want people to do from a health point of view. You know, try next time to run on the marble on your heels. It's very, very painful. Um, okay, we're about to start. So for me, therefore, keep that in mind in terms of the average runner. But in terms of athletes like Kenanisa, they don't need to be forced to run on their toes. They are doing that anyway, because that's the only way you can run at those speeds. So I think that answers your question. Okay, so now we, we're moving on to the, the second shoe, which is very, very different to the other shoe you saw. With the same shoe that you see here, Wilson Kipsang and Sub2 broke the Tokyo course record uh, in 2017. Um, uh, and a shoe that, that uh, Wilson very much enjoyed using. It'll be very interesting to see what the numbers look like and also what uh, Alexi tells us after having done that. Keep in mind that when we saw those VO2s before from the other shoe, they were in the vicinity ballpark of about 48 mils per kilogram per minute. So let's get started. And while they're getting started because of time, I'm appreciate we're going well over time here. Let me try and get to the end of the presentation at the same time. So while they're doing that, I'll talk as well. Um, remember, it'll take him about uh, three minutes to reach steady state. So for me, the message for all of us is, can we learn from the different shoes and develop the shoe that's best for your athlete? And this kind of technology and everything you're seeing here, everything you're seeing here, is technology available here? Sports excellent, and actually um, uh, the team here is made up of our team and also the um, oh wait a minute oh, okay uh, made up of my, my team and also the team uh, from Sports Excellence. So what Alexis should be doing before his next race is coming to facilities like Sports Excellent or the Tefa or wherever it is, and saying test my shoe. And Alexi's coach should be saying, 
you mustn't use that shoe. Use that shoe because the numbers are telling you it's much better. Because imagine, how, um, where's Alexis' coach? Uh, where's Alexis' coach? Alexis' coach? Well, okay. Um, I like to go and and this is Birazi. I like to can I can another question. Post new author the other mono me alagi to papuciu. Dine te sto na Alexi directorita na ehi ena me dio lepta kerdo sto chrono. Posi dulia prep na to kane sam coach na ki this is dio lepta. Ki post ki ni ka posi stane si afta po ehi zde. Beke stimes. Ενώ είτε θα έχουμε μια χρονική διάρκεια ενό έτου, δηλαδή μια ολόκληρη προπονητική περιόδου, για να βελτιώσουμε δύο λεπτά. Ενώ τώρα με την ίδια ακριβώ προπονητική επιβάρυνση θα κάνει ακριβώ δύο με τρία λεπτά πιο κάτω. Και, και αυσαν, για του κότσου εδώ μέσα και του αθλητέ, αυτό είναι. Και, για, και για τον, αν σκεφτούμε για τον, για τον Έλιο, για τον Κανή, αυτό είναι διελύ στο παγκόσμιο ρεκόρ. Γιατί κάθε αθλητή, ανάλογα με, τη, με το οποίο βρίσκεται, έχει μεγάλη απόκληση από αυτό που κάνει. Κερδίζει και περισσότερο και λιγότερο. Και μέχρι στιγμή, και, και δεν είναι σίγουρο αν. Και, και αυτό ήταν το θετικό να έχουμε και το προβολητή και τον Αλέξη εδώ. Είναι να δούμε στον ίδιο τον Αλέξη. Αυτή τη στιγμή ο Αλέξη δοκιμάζει τα δύο καλύτερα παπούτσια που υπάρχουν αυτή τη στιγμή για το μαροθώνιο. Και θα έχει ενδιαφέρον να δούμε αν αυτά τα αποτελέσματα. Είναι παρόμοια με αυτά. Και άμα είναι, τι κάνουμε, coach. Εννοείται τα δοκιμάζουμε και τα εφαρμόζουμε και στον αγώνα. Το πρόβλημα είναι, coach, πού θα τα βρει. Αυτό είναι το κόστο. Γιατί πιστεύω και το κόστο θα είναι πολύ υψηλό. Δεν είναι μόνο το κόστο. Αυτή τη στιγμή αυτό το παπούτσι τη Nike δεν υπάρχει. Λοιπόν, αν τύχει αυτό το παπούτσι είναι καλό, αυτό τουλάχιστον υπάρχει. Το άλλο δεν υπάρχει. Βλέπει που είναι το πρόβλημα. Και αν είναι πρακτική φυσικό ε, το πρόβλημα. Είναι πρακτική φυσικό το πρόβλημα. Yeah. Πρέπει να υπάρχει και στην αγορά. Έτσι. Έτσι. Και σιγά σιγά αυτό ελπίζουμε να γίνει. Okay. Ε, ποιο? Ποιο? Αυτό ναι. Όχι το άλλο. Ε, το αντίδα βρήκαμε στην αγορά. Το αντίδα στην αγορά. Το άλλο δεν ήταν. Να μην λες που προέρχεται και θα δημιουργήσει πρόβλημα. Ναι, 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 δεν το συζητάμε αυτό. Μην αλλάξουμε τέτοιες... Κότς, από αυτά που βλέπεις μέχρι στιγμής και μέχρι τώρα, πόσο έχεις εφαρμόσει στους άλλους αθλητές σου, στον Αλέξη, την επιστημονική... αυτά τα επιστημονικά πράγματα που έχουμε μιλήσει σήμερα μέχρι στιγμής. Πόσο από αυτά χρησιμοποιείς ή θέλεις να χρησιμοποιήσεις ή πιστεύεις έχουν... Όταν φύγεις σήμερα από εδώ, πόσο από αυτά θα αλλάξουν αυτά που σκέφτεσαι. Ε, πολύ σημαντική, πιστεύω, διαφορά είναι η τροφοβοσία που έχει ο αθλητής κατά τη διάρκεια του αγώνα. Αυτό που είπατε με τα υγρά. Ναι. Που εφαρμόζεται κατά τη διάρκεια του αγώνα από τους αθλητές μου, αλλά πιστεύω με αυτά που άκουσα σήμερα θα υπάρχει μια σημαντική βελτίωση. Και με το παπούτσι εννοεί της τεχνολογίας, γιατί ο Αλέξης τα τελευταία 5 χιλιόμετρα είχε πρόβλημα με τους βικεφάλους. Α. Αυτό είναι και από έλλειψη υγρών, πιστεύω, Α. και από μια καλή χρήση ε, καλού παπούτσιου. Και πες μου, ε, Μέχρι και το τελευταίο αγώνα, τι πίνει η ο Αλέξη. Ε, τελευταία τροφοδότηση ήταν στο 37,5 μου φαίνεται και πήρε. Όχι συνήθω. Τζελάκια. Μια συγκεκριμένη εταιρεία. Ναι, ναι, ναι. Οκ, βασικά. Λοιπόν, ήδη άμα σκεφτούμε και χωρί να το κάνουμε με σχέση προϊόντα κλπ. Το παπούτσι, το ποτό, το υψόμετρο, α, τα τρέινιγκ, θε... όλα αυτά που έχουμε περιγράψει. Πάμε και δεν έχω, δεν έχω ετοιμάσει τέτοια ομιλία, αλλά μπορεί να σκεφτείτε, μπορεί να είχαμε κάνει, για το είχα κάνει για τον Χάλι Καμπλασία, να, να τον πείσω να, να, να κάνει αυτές τις τεχνολογίες, ότι όταν βάζεις όλα αυτά ένα-ένα-ένα, πας από το καλύτερο του χρόνο που είναι 2.30, πώς είναι ο κλείσος, 2.36, βάζεις το ένα, πας 2.35, βάζεις το άλλο 2.34 και ξαφνικά βρίσκεις και είσαι τώρα competitive internationally, βλέπεις διαφορά. Και για το υψόμετρο συγνώμη που είπατε αυτό, ο Αλέξης έκανε όλη την προετοιμασία του σε επίπεδο θαλάσσης και συγκεκριμένα στη Σάμμο ναι, ναι. όλο το καλοκαίρι γιατί βούλευε εκεί. Ναι, δηλαδή, πολύ ναι, σημαντικό ναι, τη λαβατζάζ ναι, στην προετοιμασία ναι, του Μαραθώνιου. Ναι. Και για, για άτομα όπως έχουμε, είμαστε πολύ... Ε, 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 ευχαριστώ πάρα πολύ, κότς. Ε, ξένια, έλα, έλα σας παρακαλώ αν, αν έχεις ένα λεπτό να μας μιλήσεις. Η Ξένια Αργεντάκη είναι από το ΣΕΓΑΣ. Και θέλω και εσύ, Ξένια, να μας πεις τώρα, ενώ περιμένουμε να επιστρέψει ο Αλέξης να, να, να κάνει το τεστ έξω. Εσύ σαν ΣΕΓΑΣ τώρα, 
Πώς νιώθεις ότι οι αθλητές μας, σε αυτή τη στιγμή, κάνουν την προσπάθεια σαν αθλητές και βλέπεις, δηλαδή, πώς είναι εφικτό αυτά τα παιδιά με όλη τη διάθεση, με όλο το κόπο, με, με αυτό που λέμε στα αγγλικά, θα το δείτε το βράδυ, blood, sweat and tears, τα ίδια blood, τα ίδια sweat, τα ίδια uh, tears, δεν έχουν πιθανότητα να, κάνουν, να είναι compete, να πάμε στο παγκόσμιο, σε Ολυμπιάδα και να μπορούμε να κάνουμε compete, άμα δεν εφαρμόσουμε αυτά τα πράγματα. Λοιπόν, εσύ, σαν ακαδημαϊκός πρώτα, σαν uh, μέρο του ΣΕΓΑΣ και στην uh, Ολυμπιακή Επιτροπή, τι, 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 τι αισθάνεσαι ακούγοντας όλα αυτά. Αισθάνομαι... Βλέπω πόσο πίσω είμαστε σαν προετοιμασία. Βέβαια, γίνονται κάποιες μεμονωμένες προσπάθειες από κάποιους προπονητές με τη βοήθεια του ΣΕΓΑΣ είτε της Ολυμπιακής Επιτροπής να πάνε να κάνουν κάποιες προετοιμασίες. Αλλά από ό,τι φαίνεται, από ό,τι είδαμε εδώ, δεν αρκεί μια προετοιμασία ε, κάποιους μήνες ή την τελευταία χρονιά. Είναι, ε, θα πρέπει να υπάρχει κάποια συνέχεια. Και θεωρώ ότι η συνέχεια αυτή θα πρέπει να είναι από τις μικρές ηλικίε, Δηλαδή να μην ξεκινάει όταν τα παιδιά θα μπουν στην, στην προολυμπιακή ομάδα ή στην εθνική ομάδα ε, για να μπορέσουν να κάνουν το επιθυμητό, να έχουν την καλύτερη τους απόδοση. Θα πρέπει από τις πολύ μικρές ηλικίε, όταν πρωτοξεκινάνε, όταν αρχίζει okay. πια... Όταν αρχίζει πια η... να μπαίνει η εξειδίκευση μέσα στο πρόγραμμα των αθλητών, δηλαδή μετά τα 15-16 τους χρόνια, από εκεί και μετά θα πρέπει να οργανώνεται η δουλειά και η προπόνηση που κάνουν, ώστε όταν θα φτάσουν στην επιθυμητή ηλικία, σύμφωνα με τις δυνατότητές τους, τη βιολογική τους ηλικία και όλα αυτά που πρέπει να λαμβάνουμε υπόψη, να έχουν το καλύτερο δυνατό αποτέλεσμα. Ναι, ναι. Πριν την αφήσουμε να σου πει η Ξένια, και η Ξένια, για παράδειγμα, δεν ξέρω τώρα εδώ μέσα πόσου προπολιτέ υπάρχουν από του ΣΕΓΑ. Πώ μπορούμε να κάνουμε του coaches, αυτού που έχουν σχέση με το άθλημα, να ακούσουν αυτά και τα εφαρμόσουν. Γιατί άμα δεν τα εφαρμόσουν αυτά, ο μόνο τρόπο γιατί ο coach θα πληρωθεί ή θα πάρει το. Δεν ξέρω πώ δουλεύει στην Ελλάδα. Στο τομέα, εγώ βλέπουμε σαν ακαδημαϊκό πόσα paper θα κάνω publish. Και έτσι βλέπουμε αν είναι καλό ή πόσο καλό είμαι. Ο προπονητή θα είναι πόσο άτομα φέρνει στο ψηλό επίπεδο. Βλέπει πώ γίνεται και ο coach που να έχει την πίεση να εφαρμόσει τεχνικέ που δεν πρέπει να εφαρμόσει. Γιατί υπάρχει αυτή η πίεση. Πώς μπορούμε να, να, να αλλάξουμε αυτό το σκεπτικό. Ε, πρέπει καταρχάς να αλλάξει η νοτροπία των αθλητών. Όταν βλέπεις τα μικρά παιδιά και τους λες να κάνουν ζέσταμα για να μιλήσουμε στη γλώσσα των προπονητών, ναι, 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 ναι. τους λες να κάνουν δύο στροφές ή τρεις και αρχίζουν και το διαπραγματεύονται να κάνουν μία. Άρα η φιλοσοφία των παιδιών ε, πάσχει από την αρχή, από τη στιγμή που θα ξεκινήσουν. Ε, αρχίζει, η, δεν ξέρω πόσοι ασχολούνται με παιδιά, με αναπτυξιακές ηλικίε, αλλά από τη στιγμή που θα τους πεις να κάνουν κάτι παραπάνω από αντοχή, αρχίζουν και ε, ε, διαμαρτύρονται. Αρχίζει η διαπραγμάτευση από την πιο μικρή ηλικία, από τα 10 χρόνια, που μόλις έρχονται τώρα τα παιδιά, ε, ξεκινάνε και έρχονται, μόλις τους πεις να κάνουν μια στροφή παραπάνω, 400 μέτρα παραπάνω, αρχίζει η διαπραγμάτευση. Δεν υπάρχει αυτή τη στιγμή στη φιλοσοφία την προπονητική, δεν υπάρχει αντοχή καθόλου σε καμία ηλικία. Όταν λοιπόν αυτά τα παιδιά θα συνήθως θα πάνε, θα κάνουν 400 μέτρα, θα δουν, ξεκινώ από εκεί, ότι με την επίδοση που κάνουν δεν μπορούν να καταφέρουν κάτι, αρχίζουν μετά και μεταπηδούν στα 800 ή στα 1500 χωρίς να έχουν κάποια υποδομή στην αντοχή η οποία θα τους βοηθήσει ναι. ε, ε, να κάνουν κάτι παραπάνω. Ναι. Δηλαδή ναι. θα πρέπει θεωρώ ε, να αλλάξει η φιλοσοφία και των αθλητών και των προπονητών, κυρίως των προπονητών που θα την περάσουν στους αθλητές, από τις αναπτυξιακές ηλικίε για να έχουμε κάποιο αποτέλεσμα μετά. Το να κάνουμε τώρα κάποια παρέμβαση, είτε με τα παπούτσια ή με, την, ή με οτιδήποτε, ναι, 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 ναι. στην ηλικία που ναι, ναι, ναι. είναι η ηλικία που θα μπορέσουν να αποδώσουν. Ναι, ναι θα έχουν κάποια ναι, ναι, αποτελέσματα, ναι, 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 ναι. αλλά δεν θα είναι το επιθυμητό. Συμφωνώ απόλυτα, δεν θα ναι. βρούμε ναι, 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 ναι. τον αθλητή που θα ναι. κάνει πολύ καλή επίδοση. Ναι, ναι. Ευχαριστώ, πά... Ευχαριστώ πάρα πολύ, Ξένια. Συγγνώμη, Γιάννη, ένα σχόλιο πολύ σημαντικό. Να σας πω κάτι. Λείπατε για τους αθλητές. Είναι οι προπονητές. Και αν δεν οριστεί συνεχιζόμενη εκπαίδευση, όχι μόνο στους προπονητές, και στους γιατρούς, συνεχιζόμενη εκπαίδευση όπως γίνεται στο εξωτερικό και αξιολόγηση, όταν Γιάννη ο καθηγητής ο δικός μου, ο Σκούλκο, που είναι κορυφή στον κόσμο, ανά πέντε χρόνια πρέπει να δώσει εξετάσεις και να αξιολογηθεί πάλι, 
και είναι 65 ετών και εδώ δεν υπάρχει καμιά συνεχιζόμενη εκπαίδευση. Κανεί δεν ελέγχει εμένα. Είμαι επίκουρο και κανεί δεν ελέγχει. Εξελούξω με. Φέρνω κάτι καινούριο. Όλα αυτά που είπε είναι κάποιο προπονητή που τα παρακολουθεί τώρα ή τα ακούει τώρα πρώτη φορά. Άρα πρέπει να οριστεί και έχετε μεγάλη δύναμη ο ΣΕΓΑ. Συνεχιζόμενη εκπαίδευση στου προπονητέ. Τα παιδιά περιμένουν από του προπονητέ, όχι από του. Δεν μπορούμε να ρίξουμε το βάρο στα παιδιά, μόνο στου αθλητέ. Αυτό τώρα επιβάλλεται από την Παγκόσμια Ομοσπονδία, η οποία έχει κάνει τι κατηγορίε προπονητών από την, ε, που έχουν σχέση και με τι γνώσει του και με τα χρόνια που είναι σε κάθε κατηγορία. Και αλλάζοντα από τη μία κατηγορία στην άλλη, δίνουν πάλι πάντα εξετάσει για να φτάσουν στην ηλικία την ΤΟΠ. Είχαν δώσει μάλιστα και μία προθεσμία για του Ολυμπιακού του Τόκιο, ότι θα έπρεπε να έχουν δώσει κάποιε εξετάσει σε συνεργασία τη ΙΑΦ με το Πανεπιστήμιο του Λάφπορο, νομίζω, να περάσουν κάποια σεμινάρια για να μπορούν να υποστηρίξουν του αθλητέ με όλε τι τεχνολογίε. Και θεωρώ ότι αυτό σιγά σιγά θα γίνει σε όλε τι παγκόσμιε ομοσπονδίε. Ήδη κάνει το ποδόσφαιρο, το μπάσκετ, σιγά σιγά. Αρχίζουν όλε οι ομοσπονδίε σιγά σιγά να έχουν τη διαβίου εκπαίδευση και εξέλιξη. Ευχαριστώ. Γιατί υπάρχουν πολλοί. Ε, είχα κάποια συζήτηση χθε με κάποιου εδώ. Υπάρχουν πολλοί που νομίζουν ότι μόνο με τη θεωρία χωρί την πράξη ναι. θα κάνουν κάτι. Ούτε το ένα είναι εφικτό, ούτε το άλλο. Ναι. Αυτά τα ναι. δύο πρέπει να συνδυάζονται. Ναι. Ευχαριστώ, Ξένια, πάρα πολύ. I'd like to just because we have we are very, very privileged to have Mersha. Here, uh, Mersha has a lot of experience. He's a he's a national coach, the coach of Kenisa Bekile. He's he started with the youth athletes, and I want to just translate a little bit. This has been an incredible discussion, Mersha. That I just want to briefly just uh, translate because I would love to hear your views on what the Greek coaches have been saying. Uh, the coach of of Alexis um, uh, Xenia, who spoke just now, is part of the the Hellenic um, Athletics Federation, okay, and also a member of the uh, the Hellenic Olympic Committee. And the discussion was very much that Alexis, for example, he used a shoe which was very heavy. He uh, didn't really drink uh, anything uh, sophisticated, or actually he had much more than some gels during racing, so he would have lost there as well. Uh, in terms of training principles, a lot of this today was completely new to him. And if you add all these small things and all the things that the coach just heard today, he feels that the athlete would would go from being a good athlete to an elite athlete, in a truly elite athlete who can become competitive. Um, uh, Yes, please note as well, while we're waiting, that now we're we, we actually on the, the course again. But if I finish my, my point to Mersha, um, uh, and then the discussion was, how do we try and interact with the athletes and the coaches to bring this kind of innovations? And Xenia says something very important. She says that, and I want to really stress this, because I know how different it is in Ethiopia. She says it's very difficult to get the youngsters to actually do what we ask them to do, you know, to have the respect to actually do this training, listen to what we're saying. In Ethiopia, you don't have any of these technologies either. Talking about shoes, I've seen some Ethiopian athletes, as I'll show you tonight, not wearing any shoes, let alone having a shoe that's heavy. What do you think Greece can learn? It's gone through economic crisis, it's a difficult time for everyone. There is the issue of drugs like it is in other countries too. What do you think, based on all these innovations, and also the final thing Senya says is also important, is that it's pointless giving the shoe to an athlete and the special shoe, the special drink, if you haven't done the basics of training right? Because what's the point? Can you just address them? Because I know some of you may not be here tonight, may not hear uh, Mersha. So while we're waiting, please also have a look at the screens at the same time. Mersha, tell us your views. Give us some, some, some guidance as to what they can do and, and explain a little bit for those who won't be here tonight the philosophy of the Ethiopian system. Just five minutes. Stand up. Okay. okay. Uh, I would like to say thank you very much. Uh, I'm also very happy to be here and to, to meet you and to have you my some experience what I have. Uh, from the explanation of Yanis that I understood, uh, I, I met also some athletes and some coaches who have been talking a lot about how we are going to, uh, to become elite or to improve our performance and to join with the class athletes. 
uh, there is no any mystery. I believe it is hard work. Hard work and uh, the commitment. Plus, uh, we are really very lucky. Uh, we are circled by uh, knowledge, which means technology. Uh, we, in different times, there were different innovations that improve the way that we have been running, uh, the time that uh, we have to improve or that helps us to improve. So uh, when I come to about Ethiopia, as Yanni says, uh, everyone starts running with barefoot. And the conditions that we are uh, provide us to have uh, very familiar with running and having hard work. Uh, for example, if you ask me about Haile Gebre Selassie, not only him, but also athletes, they come from rural area. And if they want to uh, have school, they have to walk, unless they have to run uh, maybe 20 and 25 kilometers a day. And imagine when they are getting back, it's going to be like, <laughs> just I have, I have given you uh, the calculation. So it has its own uh, contribution that the boy or the girl to be very tough and to be very patient beside uh, to become an athlete or to become a sports person. But when, uh, when they are coming to the country, from the countryside to the city, after they won some races, after they won uh, some competition, they are going to see what does that mean shoes is. They will see it's shoes. What does that mean? Maybe they may come with the shoes while they are working on it. Uh, but now, nowadays, everything is the awareness of having technology, having different uh, materials uh, now is much better than the previous times. So when I come to your question, if I got it in, in clearly, the first thing to be elite athlete, you need to have first motivation. You have to be motivated because it's not such easy to, to be an athlete, honestly speaking, because it takes or it needs a lot of energy from you. Just you will prefer uh, from maybe from school, you prefer to be an athlete. Uh, you prefer uh, from from different things, just you prefer to be an athlete, which means just that, that may take your own commitment, energy, whatever, whatever. Plus, the well-designed training. I believe there is no the best training in the world that I can say, because the best training is the training that improves one's athlete's performance. That is the best training for him. Plus, it's better to follow and to read and to have contacts, some educated, well-experienced people who are around. And uh, this is uh, uh, theoretically the only thing that I can say about the question. Okay. Thank let's, you. Let's carry on. Thank you much. Thank you very much. Um, and applause for Moshe and also for Alexis. Um, I must apologize to everyone. I, I, you can see my time scheduling is terrible. We are one hour over time. So I've been asked by the organizers to speed up. I will speed up. I really apologize. I've taken some slides off. Um, but I want to get to the end. So please bear with me. Um, but I'm told that they're going to shoot me if I don't finish in under 10 minutes. OK, so, so um, the, uh, no, I need 10 minutes. I want to show a few things that I have to. So I will take my prerogative as being uh, on here to take my 10 minutes. Also, because I want to hear the result. They need 10 minutes to analyze the data. I want you to hear, OK? So. Um, the point, while they're analyzing the data, okay, comparing the two different shoes, um, I don't want to leave you the impression, this is very, very important here, 
that this is correct. It is not about the shoe. Please don't get me wrong. It's not about the drink. We are very athlete center. In it, um, um, I don't know what the Greek word is, but we're focusing on the athletes. All about the athlete. Okay. So this, I think, is ridiculous. Okay. Who is going to win this race? And you can imagine how I felt in Berlin when we were about to race with Mercia, and I see this. Who will win? The Nike shoe or the the Adidas shoe? Because what we should remember is the following. How fast does this car go? How fast? And the answer is, it cannot go without the driver. So it's not about, and it must never become about the, 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 the car. It must be about the athlete. So we need to avoid the situation that Ale Alexis and the coach described, that he has no chance, because what's his motivation going to be if he's at a disadvantage compared to everyone else? Okay, I'm, 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 I'm relieved, so I'm getting a bit of a migraine because of stress. Um, Yanis tells me that I can relax a little bit, and, and, and I, won't get, I won't be disappointed if, you, if some of you have another appointment and have to leave, that's fine. But allow me not to take time, but I will, won't rush because I feel very anxious. Okay, thank you, Yanis. Um, so yes, the point is the Ferrari cannot uh, go without the driver. What you would have seen, um, and uh, Mersha, can, can I have the sensor, please? Uh, um, uh, Sean, can, I, can you bring me the sensor that was on, um, on uh, Lex's shoe? So the sensor that you would have seen uh, when we did the experiment uh, would be difficult for me, actually not difficult, impossible for me, to ask one of our top athletes to wear this on their shoe. Why? Because it weighs 18 grams. For me, Every gram is important, okay? So the watch that weighs about 30 grams is, too, is 30 grams too heavy. But what we are able to do now, as I mentioned before, because of a, the collaboration with a Swiss watch company, is make this into 0.2 grams. So the new sensor we have, or we'll be using in our next race, looks like that. Okay, and it goes, and what we're doing is we're going to build it into our shoe. So it's in the foam part of the shoe, so the shoe is intelligent. And I went over the slide before, and I deleted it because of time. The slide I was going to show you was that we are now getting the best knowledge from Nike's shoe, the Adidas shoe that we've used. Our previous sponsor, the shoes that I'm currently wearing on, who dropped us because uh, of the pressure from the, the various other big companies, the discussion is being re-engaged. Whoever our partner is going to be, we'll know that in the next months, we will be applying the sensor into the shoe. And we ne negotiations with two of the biggest shoe companies to actually help us create the sub two shoe. And I have a surprise for you shortly to show you, in addition to the sensor, one of the next innovations which I think will really blow your minds away. So we'll come to that just before I end. Oh, actually, it's here. It's here. So, to try and innovate, and I'm sure especially I speak for the reality in Greece and the reality in Ethiopia and in Kenya, I get really upset when I see hundreds of shoes being sent to Kenya or Ethiopia from around the world, from, from runners like ourselves who send their old shoes to Africa. I can't think of a worse thing to do, because my bad gait is provided to an athlete to harm their gait, and then we harm their environment because we've got to get rid of rubber. You know, there can't be anything worse thing to do. Like what happened in, in Ethiopia, Mercia, you'll remember, that a lot of the old Russian vehicles, the Lada, were sent to Addis Ababa, and that caused an envi environmental catastrophe, okay? That is not helping the world. We need to think about sustainability. Our new partner in Sub2 is a very, very exciting company. Um, this is not advertising, this is innovation. Who are innovating in terms of creating a shoe from a very interesting compound. Watch the next slide, the next small video. We recycle metal, plastic, paper. Why can't we recycle CO2? When I first got contacted with the idea of how do you turn CO2 into a product, it was one of those moments where it's like, damn, I can't mind anything of that. I think shoes is a great place to start with this. When you can actually have them try on something that came from CO2, then it, it, it sinks in a lot more. 
how could we make a shoe without a footprint? I'm an optimist, and I do think that science will help us reverse the negative impact that we as a species have had on the planet. The energy industry really emits the largest amount of carbon. So with the NRG COSIA Carbon X Prize, we are encouraging really smart people from around the world to focus on how do you take this byproduct, carbon dioxide, and turn it into something useful. We're thinking about fuels you can power a car with, cement you might build a building out of, uh, and polymers like, like polyester that you could actually wear like a sneaker. You know, CO2 is a terrific raw material. People are really surprised that you can take basically the breath you exhale and turn that into a product. What we use in our process is CO2 that would be normally emitted to the atmosphere. We add our catalyst. After several hours, our process is complete. We completely re-engineered the material science of shoe fabrication, and we made the first athletic shoe that uses recaptured CO2 as a building block. When you can put carbon into something like a shoe, then that changes the perspective. When we stop having the conversation about sustainability and it just becomes the way product is created, I think that's where the magic really happens. This is the focus that we as a company have. We want to make this world a better place for our children and grandchildren. The shoe without a footprint won't solve the CO2 crisis. But if we can capture carbon and turn it into a shoe, we can potentially turn it into anything. So my point about showing you that is Marcel Boerta uh, and 10 Times Beta are sub -2's new partner. We're meeting in a few days' time in Düsseldorf, and we are 18 months away of having our shoe from carbon dioxide. It is absolutely amazing. Think back to the slide I showed you from the Twitter feed where the athlete from Boston was referring to the fact, oh no, the shoes only last one race. I have six or seven shoes that after each race I throw away. Imagine the... The, the, the impact that will have on our environment if everyone has a few sh hundred shoes a year to throw away and the impact that will have on our, on our society. So that's one aspect which I think sustainability is very, very important. The other issue which I think is very important for the sensors that we referred to, because uh, we spoke very much about kinematic and kinetic sensors that you saw today in the demonstration, but we mustn't forget what I mentioned before about having biological sensors. The ability, as I mentioned before, the problem is hundreds of years after the, the invention in one sense of the aerobic VO2 max idea, we still in Ergometrica do VO2 max testing. We still do anaerobic threshold testing. Where is the innovation? Well, the technology can help. And in talking about periodization and training, that's the scientific basis of training. The future is going to be, or the presence, as you saw from our examples today, is going to be wearables. Wearables are going to revolutionize the lives of the coaches. Coaches is in this room. You must understand wearables. If you don't understand wearables, you're not going to be the coach of the future. Uh, you're going to do your training, your athletes' training, based on the kind of things that you saw. The ergometrica, the testing facilities, will have to use this technology. And let me show you an example. Here you see from this group um, in the uh, University of California in Berkeley, uh, they have a sensor here who they want to measure sweat chemistry. And that was, a f that was actually some time ago, now 2016, Watch where some of this has gone to. It's got really has gone on and moved on. Watch this. From Abbott makes it possible to track glucose levels without drawing a drop of blood again and again. When I was first diagnosed, you would definitely know I was diabetic by looking at my fingertips. Before the Freestyle Libre, I would have to stop to test my blood sugar. That would take up a lot of time. With this newer technology, you don't have to stop and you don't have to wonder in that time, what is my body doing? Drawing blood with painful finger sticks just to get the basic information they need about their glucose levels is unfortunately the reality for many people with diabetes. We really wanted to transform that reality, reinvent daily glucose monitoring, and provide a seamless and painless option. Here is the groundbreaking solution. Simply scanning this small sensor provides real-time glucose data I see the trend of my sugars, and I can prevent highs and lows in advance. I can do 
everything better with technology. People are then able to adjust their diet, exercise and insulin based on the results and they're able to get healthier. 415 million people around the world have diabetes. Here at Abbott, we've been working to help people like Courtney live a better life. This technology is changing lives for people living with diabetes around the world. Let's be very clear, I'm not advertising Abbott either. All I'm trying to show you is how we can work together. You notice the way they're getting the glucose response is providing the, the, the sensor and the receiver together. Compared to what you saw here, that's archaic. So imagine combining the technology that Sub2 has here illustrated that you saw today with that technology in terms of glucose monitoring. But the coaches in the room will want to say, well, glucose doesn't change so much, although it'll be nice to know in the marathon what happens. It'll answer the coach's question about whether Alexis was well prepared from the drinking, because would his glucose levels have dropped as coach may predicted it would have, because he didn't drink towards the end. But I think the physiologists in the room, the ergometrica cadre, will want to know, can I measure lactate? Um, uh, can I measure lactate in real time? Can I do my exercise test in the field? Can I do my prescription of training in the field? I love Ethiopia, I love Kenya, but I have, I have to do my work in my lab. I could watch Kenanisa's training program and, and what uh, Mercia is doing every day by my iPhone. I don't have to leave anywhere and I could watch. And lactate is only the beginning. What about the, the markers that we'll talk about tonight, gene expression and the, and the proteome and, the, and, the, and the, the whole epigenome and all these interesting things. This is just the beginning, but these are the technologies that will come into sport in our everyday lives. And I, I mentioned to you before about the interaction between sport and also medicine and biology and the ideas that we discussed uh, today, some of it in terms of Internet of the Things and Big Data. This is our presentation in terms of the telemedicine together with our Italian partners here, Ugo Riba and Giuseppe Mazzazza. And again, uh, myself here in terms of providing this demonstration that you saw today at the Big Medica in Germany. I have two minutes left, okay? All right, good. Um, we need to interact with these organizations um, in order to develop these technologies in a win-win way. Um, if you want to read up more about and if I haven't convinced you of the importance of wearables for training, for telemedicine, we've invented a new term in this paper written by myself and some of my students. We're inventing a new word, not telemedicine, telesport, because that's going to be so very important to understand in real time what is happening. And if we can do this well, you should see some of these things in the Tokyo Olympics as well. Um, I should also mention that the sport industry has an important role to play in differentiating what works and what doesn't work. I'm not promoting the smartwatch that you saw today per se, because you know what, you can't buy the app. It's not available at the moment. But I can tell you, thanks to the Astroscopio Athenon, we are accurate, and also to the work from um, our Greek engineer for, from Vodafone, we can be accurate to one meter when you're doing your work outside. So what you saw on the screens today was accurate, maybe a delay because of the room, but accurate to one meter. I know some of you, and I won't mention other brands, but I've seen some of you walking around with different brands. And one brand that I won't mention, because I'm not here to promote or to destroy brands, that particular uh, uh, wearable that costs a few hundred euros, the top of the range, when we tested it in the, in the Madrid uh, half marathon, was off by 800 meters. 800 meters for the coach, you can understand is the difference between, you know, it can becomes, I've got one minute left, okay. So, therefore, what we need to do is differentiate between all the wearables, what is better and what is not. And this is a task that we've also taken on board to try and say, well, what should we, which ones of these are better than, than the rest, so we can move the field forward, not only in terms of sport, but also in health, and, uh, and my time is up, and I'll stop, and there's no time for questions, I'm told. Thank you. <laughs>